You're willing to swear to this in court? You bet I am. I decided to accept Oban's testimony. Knowing Johnny's concern for his mother, I convinced him to change his plea to not guilty. Bail was set at $1,500, and Dobin kept his word and put up the money. Hell good, Johnny? I'll take it while I can, Father. With the help of Mr. Matthews, I hope it'll be for a long, long time. Oh, Father, that's up to Johnny. Oh, well, thanks. I'll be seeing you. No, I can't figure you out, Johnny. I give you your alibi, put up bail, take you back on the job, and you walk around here like I'm dirt under your feet. You don't even say thanks. Why did you gimmick that time card? You know I didn't check out that night. <laughs> I'm surprised at you, Johnny. You know I like you and your brother, that nice mother of yours. Yes, sir, I like the whole family. And you know me, if I like somebody, nothing's too good for them. Relax. Now, you're sure there's nothing about that you'd like to change, Mr. Lambert? No. It was just as I told you. It was kind of dark in the store, and his face was in the shadow, especially with the cap he was wearing. But the boy you have in jail looks like him. And I know that leather jacket anywhere. All right, that's all, Mr. Lambert. Thank you. It's so good to have both my boys home again. This is only the beginning, Mom. I got big plans. Your own automobile agency. Yes, ma'am. Then things are going to start humming around here. I have a new stove, new refrigerator, new dishwasher. I'd settle for a new dryer. Let's not wait till you open your agency. The dishes are wet now. Johnny, you got no imagination. You're going to be working with your hands the rest of your life. I'll get it. Hello? Oh, hello, Nat. Change in plans is tonight. Meet me in half an hour. Tonight? Yes, tonight. You be there. All right. All right, I'll leave now. Business, Edward? Yes, Mother. I'm afraid I'll have to go out for a little while. Well, good luck, dear. Sleep well, Mother. Do a good job. Be right back, Mom. Where are you going? I got a date. With Dobin? With Dobin, if it's any of your business. Look, I wouldn't care if you fell off a cliff, but Mom would. So what you do is my business. Let go. Edward, if you come home early, perhaps we could play a game or two of cribbage. Yeah, that's a great idea, Mother. You and Johnny can play a couple of games while you're waiting. I'll, I'll be right back. You can win a couple of games from Mother. She's great competition. Set up the board, Mom. I'll be right back. Are you stupid or don't you care? Right now, Dobin is dynamite. If you get stuck, how do we keep that from Mom? Nothing's gonna happen. Nothing's gonna happen because you're not going anyplace. I'm not kidding. Now let go of me. You want Mom to hear all this ruckus? You care so much about Mom, stay away from Dobin. Look, Johnny, the only way out of this trap is with money. Money, we can set up our own agency. You, you be the inside man. I'll do the selling. No sale, Eddie. Johnny, stay out of this. It's none of your business. You go inside, Eddie, or I'll break your arm. I can do it. You know I can. I'm glad you decided to stay home, Edward. Are you sure you're doing the right thing? That's part of Edward's selling technique, Mom. Always keep them guessing. You two understand each other so well. Hello? Hello, let me speak to Edward, please. No. No. Look, you crazy kid, let me talk to Edward. No, that's all right. Who was it? Wrong number. It's your play, Johnny. Strange man, Nathaniel Dobin, the way he's taken those two boys to him. 
Yes, but Dobin's not paying Edward the kind of money that allows him to indulge in sprees and at the same time contribute to the support of the house. Sprees? Well, I don't understand. We had the police check on the night spots in town. One in particular remembers him. Oh, he doesn't come in often, but when he does, he splurges. What has all this got to do with Johnny's case? I can't say definitely. But I've started an experiment in chain reaction. Hello? Eddie, I've got a scoop for you. I think there's a process server on the way over to your house. No, you can't duck it. You have to take it. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Anything wrong, Edward? Oh, no, no, nothing, Mom. Just a business call. You seem so preoccupied today. Do you feel all right? Oh, sure, sure, Mom. I'm fine. Somebody coming up the walk. I'll, I'll, I'll get it. You were expecting me, huh? I saw you coming up the walk. Where is it? The State versus John Martin. You would appear day after tomorrow. Okay. Goodbye. Oh, uh, I forgot to ask you. You are Edward Martin? Yeah. Yeah. Goodbye. It is trouble, isn't it, Edward? No, no, not, not exactly, Mother. It's just that, well, one of Mr. Dobin's uh, customers is suing him because of some faulty delivery, and since I'm one of the salesmen, why, they're subpoenaing me to appear as a witness. It's nothing to worry about. If you say so, Edward. But, Mother, you know how tricky these lawsuits can get if, if someone should come around asking questions. What kind of questions? Well, you know, like, uh, where was I a week ago Thursday night? Do you remember the night we played cribbage? Edward, last night was the first time you and I played cribbage in months. Now, Mother, if, if anyone should ask, we, we did play cribbage that night. You'd say that, wouldn't you? For me? The day of the trial arrived. The district attorney had prepared his case well. In quick order, he placed Johnny at the scene of the crime. The jacket tying him irrevocably to the robbery. And the young prosecutor made much of Johnny's earlier confession of guilt. Dovin was the first important witness for the defense, supplying Johnny with his alibi, the dated time card. Your witness. Mr. Dobin, you say that on the night of the robbery, Johnny Martin was helping you on a motor repair job. That's right. Is it customary for you to work on the motors? Mm, not customary. Only when one of my customers is in a rush. At night, somebody was in a rush. Mr. Dobin, would you mind holding up both of your hands so that the court may clearly see them? Well, what's this all about? Your Honor, witness will do as directed. Are these the hands of a mechanic? A man who works on motors? Objection, Your Honor. That is all. You may step down. A shadow of doubt had been cast on Dobin's testimony. A shadow stronger.